<laughs> yeah. Shake my, <laughs> my life. Yeah. Just as you Josh, that. Josh was uh, taking the mickey at me. Cause he said I looked like I was uh, um, going to be a news reporter. It's like, mm-hmm. and today's news is we all have to stay indoors. <laughs> Hi, everyone. How are you? <laughs> Hope you're all okay. Um, happy, happy Tuesday to you all. Um, uh, everyone all right? Everyone okay? Did anything over over the weekend? Did you have a go? I saw um, on the Giggless page one lady had a go at the. I can't remember. Sorry, I can't remember your name. Had to go at the face in um, tutorial that we did, which was cool. I'm glad you enjoy all enjoyed that. Um, right, what have we got to tell you? Um, Starcraft. Starcraft. If you're a crocheter, Starcraft have got a new um, make along crochet along coming out soon. Um, It's called Resilience in Bloom. I will put some links to what it looks like and everything on our Facebook page later on, okay? Um, But uh, we can put a pack together for you if you want uh, want us to. Um, They've given us all the wool that you'll need for it. It's really pretty, actually. Um, But like I said, I'll I'll put the link up in a moment for you so you can have a little look at it. Um, But we can put a a, a pack together for you, okay? So um, if you are interested, drop us a Facebook message or an email just to say, you know, or comment on the link that I'll put on in a moment, okay? But um, they always do really good crochet along style craft. I know we did back, oh, when we first opened, we did the carousel one, which was lovely. Um, and they've done lots and lots since and they are all free as well you can go on the Starcraft website and um, you can download like the the crochet alongs each each week and stuff and they it's there they, they do it in like British terminology American terminology German terminology all you know all different ways so um, so yeah so if anybody's interested in that um, probably wait wait to see what it looks like first but <laughs> i'll put the link up on our facebook page later and you can have a little look and if anybody would like a pack drop us a message and i can give you details on how much and all it would be okay um news last night obviously that uh, england is going into a really big lockdown and schools and all, all aren't going back and all so uh good thing is it gives you more time for crafting hopefully we've all got to stay in haven't we so josh who's there who's coming online We've got Heather, Katie. Oh, sorry about the noise, guys. If you can hear Sonia. that banging and crashing, it's the dogs. Sheila says, I'm going to butcher this, but she's look, looking forward to this as she almost finished her La Passacaglia. Passacaglia, well done. <laughs> You've um, almost finished one, have you? Oh, yeah. I need pictures. I absolutely need pictures. Oh, that's exciting. Now, something, this, this little tutorial we're going to do today, um, it's something that I've looked at and looked at and looked at for years. And I bought these templates from good old Crafty UK. Okay. So it's a set of five shapes for patchwork. And it, it's to make the Passacaglia um, block, the English paper piecing block. I've had these. Oh, this isn't going to work. Two seconds, guys. I'm going to have to um, just put the dog out. Come on. What's this? Sorry about that, ladies. <laughs> I've got my sister's dog again, and uh, he's really noisy. And he's, yeah, he doesn't just lie down. He doesn't lie down and just veg. Well, actually, that's a lie. He will lie down and veg. He slept on Josh for about two hours earlier. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I bought these templates, I think, about six or seven years ago from Crafty UK, and I've never got around to doing it. So this is purely self-indulgent. This was like, what am I going to do for one o'clock? gives me excuse to have a little go at it i've done some pic i've printed off some pictures of where of what the type of quilts um are for you so you can have a little look so i'm hoping josh is going to be able to get these so la passacaglia is um based on a book called millifore quilts by and i'm going to butcher her name wilney i think it is hammerstein it's really hard to get hold of the book now i've tried on amazon and they're all like out is a lot of it's out of prints and she's written two or three different books but they're these beautiful beautiful english paper piece in designs so this is just one that i've pulled off the internet you can see that you can put all sorts of different um rosettes together because you make it in little rosettes i don't know if you can see on this one you make it in all little rosettes like this and then they all join in and everything there are free colouring sheets out there, which again, I will put a link on for you. 
um, you can see here how this lady has made partly a rosette here, but then she started her new colour in here, okay? It's not for the faint-hearted, okay? If you've never done English paper piecing before, I absolutely wouldn't um, do this as your first ever paper piecing, okay? Start with some nice hexes or some tumbling blocks, okay? But I just, I printed these off just so that you could have a little idea. If you go onto Pinterest or Google, you'll see thousands and thousands of these beautiful, beautiful millifore, I think that's how you say it, millifore, I think so, quilts. Uh, and La Passacaglia is her version of these, these millifore quilts, okay? Um, and like I said, I had the templates. If you drop Crafty UK a message and ask for the Passacaglia templates, he'll send them you. And as ever, these are brilliant. You know I love his templates. He, he does fab, fab, fab things. The other thing that you need to do is, um, obviously because it's English paper piecing, is you need to do your paper pieces, which you can do from these, okay? But it takes a little bit of time, okay? Because you need quite a lot. So I've drawn them all out for you on templates and they're on the website. They're in as a digital download only, so you can just print out, is download it and then print them out, which means you haven't got to sit and draw the paper pieces. Because, I mean, you can see this is not, in order to make this little one, which I did, I just did one rosette over the weekend, just to have a little play with it. Um, it's brilliant for fussy cutting as well, but we'll get into that. I've drawn out all the paper pieces for you, and they're there on our website that you can just download, print them, and cut them out yourself okay so are you all still with me at the moment is everybody still there yeah everyone's quite excited oh it's so beautiful it's such a such a stunning quilt i mean this isn't something that you are going to make in in a month you know this is something that's a long-term project and you could make little you know you could make rosettes and you make them in different sizes which again there's lots and lots of tutorials out there hundreds of tutorials on youtube um, on Pinterest and all sorts about how to put this together and like I said there are colouring sheets which do like the whole quilt and you can colour it in and go right I'm going to do a, a rosette in that one and just make it and put them aside you know every time you finished another project you could make it out of scraps you know the bits that are left over because you need very little um, you could do it on a colour theme you're going to say I'm only ever going to use blues or, or whatever you could do rainbow you know um, lots and lots and lots it's also, when you get clever, which I haven't quite got there yet, you can do some amazing fussy cutting, which gives like secondary patterns. Let me see if there's, I think I printed the one that did on here actually. So any questions there, we'll just find this one. Um, oh, I, I, Jean says, could, uh, could perhaps try a cushion to start with? Yeah, well that's what I thought I'd do. I made up this one rosette and I thought, and you, <laughs> oh, this is not gonna work today, is it? The dog is determined to come in the hat, <laughs> come in. <laughs> um, so I fussy cut, I, hopefully you can see on here. So I fussy cut all like these little bears out of this navy fabric that I had. I fussy cut as near as I could with these little animals. And then I fussy cut all the little swallows as well, out of some scraps of fabric, okay? Um, so you can do that, like on this one, you can see that she, they've, she's fussy cut these ones here so she's got like this lovely ring of almost looks like um candies doesn't it like humbugs or something but the ones in here she's actually managed to fussy cut so that the pattern follows on because each one of these here if i could just mark that there like that is one of one of those pentagons you know but she's fussy cut it so it works so the more experience you get with this and the more you play around with it the more amazing patterns you can make but I thought we'd go we'll go relatively simple okay and we'll start at the beginning and I'll show you how you can cut your own paper pieces if you don't want to have to do them yourself and then I've got a little sample to have a little go at here okay but um, yeah it's 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 interesting I really enjoy doing it so anybody there Josh what you're giggling at what you're smiling at <laughs> uh, Linda says you do love a bear I do love a bear. I do. You know I love bears. I proper love bears. <laughs> so, Crafty UK's templates, and has designed these really, really well. So the outside, can, you can use your rotary cutter on them. The outside just to cut your fabric, and you've got a three-eighths of an inch seam allowance. But you've got little holes in the templates, which is where you can draw your paper pieces. Okay? So, and I did all this for you. I was very nice to you. 
and you can download the templates and I did it all for you so you've got whole sheets of them you can just cut up and you can just pop a little pencil so I like a mechanical pencil because it's a really nice um, fine nib through the holes like that and then you can just line up your dots okay now you can reuse your templates absolutely you can reuse your templates if you want to because you can get this has already been in in one it's going to go in another one you can use them sort of three or four times but you do need quite a lot so you have got to draw out and cut cut out quite a lot so that would be my paper template okay so i just join the dots in the that are there in the template and you've got five different shapes you've got a pentagon you've got some which is a one and a half you've got a one inch pentagon Oh, I'm missing one. There's five. I'm missing one. I don't know where it's gone. No, oh, I don't know. I've, I've managed to dab one down somewhere. That's where I was working on it last night. There's um, a big diamond. There's a little isosceles triangle. And what's the other one? I've lost one. Oh, there's another diamond. There's a proper diamond. Ah, there it is. It's to end the fabric. There we go. So that's the five, okay? And those five go together so this is how I sort of started to plan it out these five go together like this so you're using a which is your big diamond for your first bit which will go in you can see like that okay and then this one fits in so you could just make some of those to start with just have a little go at those two shapes once you've done that is a little bit then your bigger pentagon goes all the way around the outside now i run out of paper so i was just down the sides and then and i have to say these these are little these are fiddly but then they those go on like that either side and then you drop in a smaller pentagon or the big diamond again which if i just pull this apart for you again hopefully you can see that now so i've got my diamond there in the center got the long 30 degree diamond or 36 degree diamond in there which makes that center rosette the big pentagon goes around the outside and does the next ring and then you have a mixture on the outside so you have all these lovely little isosceles triangles like that okay and then so diamonds in one every other bit and little pentagons in another little bit if you want to make this bigger and they absolutely do with things like that you can see so they've added another ring all the way round there you can put more isosceles triangles in here and it actually makes a star let me see if i can see show you one that you can really see the star um yeah there we go okay so can you see you can you can really see that star which is what that makes so you can keep building and building and building or just have a little go at the middle one okay which would make a beautiful cushion or you could put it onto a the front of a bag or something it's just nice to have a go with a new technique isn't it so once you've cut out all your paper pieces which there are a lot of them oh, thanks Josh okay like that you're then going to use the same template so I've cut out enough of those ones I'm then going to use this same template to cut out my fabric now I've found a little pack of um, Liberty Lawn that I've again had for years and years and years and years um, I don't know where I got it from it's a pack that I picked up somewhere like a scrap pack and I thought I'd have a little play with these because I've gone quite muted with that first one so I thought let's let's really you know go with a bit of colour now I did fussy cut these little flowers okay so I used the diamond like this let me grab the right fabric there you go and it is a weeny bit wasteful if you fussy cut but i decided so there's a little hole in the center which is you want to get into the center of the bit that you want and then just cut round okay and then i found the next one can i i couldn't get it out of that one okay but i could get it out of that one there okay so you can fussy cut it to give yourself you know that I've, i wanted those five flowers in the center okay so I'm going to show you how to glue baste because I do like to glue baste. You could hand tack these if you want, but I'm definitely a glue baster. It's so, so much quicker. Um, 
So on the wrong side of my fabric, which is that side, okay, I'm going to put my paper piece down and you want to roughly centre it and you can see now you've got that three eighths of an inch seam allowance, okay. With my glue pen, you don't need a lot of these glue pen, this glue. We do sell them on the website and then you can get refills for them as well, which is brilliant because you're not putting all this plastic into waste. You can just put refills in. You just need a little bit of glue like that, okay? And then you're just going to gently fold the fabric over like that. Oh, hang on, I'm getting all caught up on my fabrics. You're going to put up a little dab of glue on the fabric and along the paper and then just gently pull it over and go all the way around okay you don't need a lot of glue it sticks really well it does wash out when you take the papers out it does wash out really nice and easily and you can tack up and baste them as quick as that okay nice and easy and you can see it's a really nice job for you know put a good put a good film on put you know calamity jane or something on and you can sit and just don't give me that look you know i love a musical <laughs> josh is raising his eyebrows at me <laughs> But you can do these nice and quickly, okay? You can just sit. I do all my cutting, all my paper pieces, and I just sat and, and did all my basting, okay? Once you've got all your shapes basted up, I thought I'd show you about putting it together as well. So, any questions, any comments? What's happening on there, Josh? Just while I thread a needle. Lots of people enjoying the idea of a glue gun. Oh, yeah, those glue pens are fab. Oh, pen, I, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I much prefer them to... I mean, you can hand tack them. Um, but I'm just really face. lazy. I like it. I like a glue pen. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah, I just showed a bit of my face there. Uh, <laughs> is, uh, she just says it's time consuming but worth it. Yeah, absolutely. And Jean loves the pattern. Oh, I, I do. I, I really like this pattern. I mean, you don't <laughs> have Carrie to... says it's such a good film. It is, isn't it? It's a good film. I love Calamity Jane. Don't get me wrong. These make life inc so much easier and are, in my view, absolutely worth the money. OK, um, but you don't necessarily need them. You could if you wanted to, once you've got with all those paper pieces, you could if you wanted to. It's just fiddly. You could put that onto your fabric, although it's harder to fussy cut. OK, you could then draw around it and cut it out bigger. But again, that's mega time consuming. I, I think it's absolutely worth it if you're going to have a go to get the templates. So. Any other questions there, love? Just I get this needle ready. Uh, no, everyone just loves the glue. Oh yeah, they're fab. Loving, I love my glue pen. Use it for lots. It's really good for when you're putting in zips as well. You can put, just put a little dab on, and it just holds the zip in place. So you haven't got pin, lots of pins and all in in, in the way. So <coughs> I haven't got lots of steps for these, I'm afraid, guys, because otherwise I'd have had to have you know I would you'd have been sat here watching me sew for ages. So with these diamonds, I sewed these two together first. OK, just along here and then together. And now I'm going to drop this one in here. OK. You want to make sure that these little dog ears are out of the way. All right. You don't want those. OK. And I'm going to drop that one in here. OK. Now, we, I like a what they call a flat back whip stitch. OK. Traditionally, it was just you would put them like that and you just over sew slip stitch all the way down. OK. But you will always, always, and I think I've said this before on, on tutorials we've done on English paper piecing, you will always see the stitching. It doesn't matter what you do, you will see some of the stitching, okay? With the flat back stitch, it's, in fact, you can see it. I don't know if Josh, you, Josh can get really close here. That's the difference. Can you see? I, you can see the, my stitches there, but here where I flat backed, you can't see them, okay? I don't know if, can you see there? I obviously got into a bit of a trance and started doing old way. So but I can see my stitches, but then when you suddenly go to a flat back, you can't. I'm not sure if that camera will pick that, that amount Just of detail about. up. But um uh, it's worth it. You do sell the glue pens, don't you? We do sell the, the glue pens. On the website. They're on the website, yes, absolutely. So we're gonna put these right sides together like this, and you do want to put them right sides together to start with, just to do that very first stitch. Line them up. And right on the very edge, you're going to take, oh, and I'm going to try and do this towards you, it's not easy holding it. Okay, so I'm going to take just a one little tiny back stitch right on the very edge, like that. Okay. Now if you're going to do the flat back stitch, you don't need to worry about your cotton colour. Okay, I would, because you won't see the cotton, 
I would, um, if you're going to just do over sewing, I would match my cotton to the colour of my background as near as possible. Okay, go with this thinner needle as you can handle. Okay, the thinner you, you're, you're comfortable with is better for this because again, it takes little tiny, tiny snippets of fabric. And also go with a thinnish thread, you know, something like the Aurifil is really good, a 50 weight thread, something like that, as thin a thread as you can handle too. Okay, and I always take just one or two little tiny stitches right at the beginning before going flat. It just helps anchor it. Okay, and then I'm going to turn it flat like this. And this is where a binding clip comes in handy. Okay, I'm going to put a binding clip just there on the top to keep it flat. Can you see that, Josh? You see, I've popped that binding clip there. Okay, I just put that in the wrong way. Oh, totally have. Don't hang on, sorry guys, <laughs> just completely put that in the wrong way. <laughs> put it on the long side, not the short side. That's because I was trying to face it towards you guys rather than towards me it's going to go in like that it's not going to go in like that at all it needs to go in that way <laughs> so let's do that again and just quickly attach that one right at the very end so while I'm doing that talk to me ladies what what's uh what's going on anybody having a chat there uh after Fiona asked about the pens we have nothing else yet no so who's had a go at English paper piece in um I'd really, I, what was the lady's name that had finished it? Said she's just finished hers earlier on. Can you remember, Josh? I cannot. Oh. Um, Sorry, whoever that was, I'd really, really love to see pictures of your finished one. I'm, I'm quite excited about the fact you've, uh, somebody's done one. Because <laughs> it is a lot of work, isn't it? It's, I mean, it's a huge amount of work. Okay, so I'm going to use a binder clip to hold that in place. It holds it nice and flat. And with the flat back stitch, I'm going to try and do this towards you. Okay, this is not going to be easy. So you're going to take a little tiny piece from that side and a little tiny piece from that side. Okay, like that. Okay, and just pull through. A little piece from that side and a little piece from that side. Ah, it was Sheila. Like Sheila. Oh, yeah. Yes, please, Sheila. I'd love to see it. I really would. I love these quilts. I think they're beautiful. Now you can see they're not. it's not particularly close together. You don't have to be, you know, tiny, tiny little stitches. The joy of the flat back stitch is that it won't doesn't show at all on the front and it's actually a lot quicker than doing lots and lots of little over so can you see what I'm doing I'm just literally taking one tiny little bit from that side tiny little bit from that side little snippet and pulling through and this is a lot easier when it's facing towards you not being held at an odd angle on the camera and what that does is that pulls it down and like it's like a ladder stitch it pulls it close like that. So you would work all the way down this side. Karen asks, do you sew from the outside? Do you have to sew from the outside to the centre? No, not at all. But it's easier because I can go down there and back up that way. If I start at the centre and come out, I've got to join it twice. So by going from the outside in and back up again, it's like one seam rather than two that I've got to start and finish. That's that's why I do it. Um, and also, there's another thing with English paper piecing is once you kind of get used to it you you want to look for the least amount of seams that you can do so like with this one once I put this one in and then you can add in these ones by starting at this edge coming down to the center and back up I could then when I put this one in go down and back up and it it's less stopping and starting you've got less finishing off in each time because you can just keep going all the way around okay you sell the clips as well right uh we do have binding clips i think they're in the shop i don't know if they're on the website but um i'm going to totally do myself out of a sale now these tins put to me in it the a word okay the amazon word these tins we can't compete with them we just can't on price we have got some in the shop but i think they're about four quid for ten 7 99 they come in a tin and you get like 150 in there go on amazon and put binding clips in and they come in little tins all like that they're so so much so much cheaper we we can't spend your money with us on pretty fabrics go to amazon for binding clips <laughs> it's um we we can't get them at that price um we do have a few in the shop but um unless you're on an amazon ban <laughs> i would i'd highly suggest going to amazon for them 
um, just because you get so much more for your money. Okay. So, uh, but if you uh, don't like to use Amazon, we do have some, but not in that quantity. Um, any other questions, Anne? So I'm just working down to this centre. Bit. Anna says it's looking great. Claire's got a ten of those clips as well. Yeah, they're fab. They're really fab. I I remember um, I buy them for people for birthday presents, parts of birthday presents, you know, sewing friends because they're such a and they're really cute little tins as well. And they're all different designs. The tins. I don't think you can choose the design. They just send you random ones. But yeah, they're um they're really good. Do you do cotton canvas fabric? Uh, we do have some cotton canvases, yes. Um, if you want to drop me a message, um, whoever that is. <laughs> Kate, Katie Fowler. Uh, Katie Fowler, if you want to drop me a message, I can point you, I can send you in the right direction on the website for which ones are the cotton canvases, okay? So I've come down to the centre here. I'm going to move the dog ears out of the way. These bits of the dog ears, these flappy bits, yeah? So that I can come back up that seam, okay? And then I can just take a little snippet there. Again, I'm trying to do this towards you. It's not hard, it's quite hard to see because I'm not over the fabric enough. Like that. Okay, and I'd work my way back up. And once you've done that, you can then and you're gonna build from the center out. Okay. It's uh like I said, these are slightly tricky shapes. If you've not done English paper piecing before, I would highly recommend just doing some hexagons or some tumbling blocks, which are just diamonds, which you actually could do from these ones, okay? You can just do tumbling blocks. We have got a tutorial on them, but you can just use diamonds and they make really pretty patterns and stuff. Um, but I wouldn't start with this one. However, it's not beyond, you know, if, you, if you've had a little play with English paper piecing, you know, it's not beyond anybody. It's just thinking about how it's all gonna go together. For me, I think this quilt would be the planning I would really, I would really want to plan it out with my colours and stuff. I think, and sort of decide what, um, how it's going to work. So I'm going to go all the way up here, like this, nearly there to the top. Okay, um, nearly at the top, like that, and right up to the top. Now I could just finish off now, and by finishing off, I, I'm going to finish off, but I'm not going to actually break the thread. So I'm just going to go through again right at the very top and back through that loop to create a little knot and pull it down tight. And then you can just bury your thread. However, I need to add one of these ones in and that thread is already there. So I might as well use it because I've still got enough on my, my needle. So I might as well use it. So this one's going to go in these little skinny bits. Come on, like that. And it's going to sit in there. OK, oh, come on like that okay so that's going to sit in there All right and then this one will sit in there like that okay and that would be the very center of my rosette i can then build on the next row round so i can add in these pentagons like this okay and again with these i would i would join like two or three in a row and then i would fit it in like that and sew a seam again less starting and finishing because if you just sew that one to there and stop and then you've got to put that one in and stop it's you've then got to go back in and do all the the side pieces okay so it's much easier if you join sort of two or three together i wouldn't go more than three and then you can do that as one seam okay just makes life a little bit easier and then you can build it up. You just build it up and build it up. You, know, you can see that this, where I started to plan it out, you know, this was my centerpiece and these were my bits here and then my pentagons were going on. Okay, hopefully you can get that. But the colouring sheets you can get are literally like a whole quilt. They're like a black and white version of this. Okay, and you can print it out so you could literally get your colouring pencils in, get a bit of mindfulness going on. <laughs> And you could colour in the bits you want. I wouldn't start with a large rosette, okay? Start with a little one. Start with just a nice little one and see how you get on, okay? It might be that you just want to do a whole cushion cover or something, you know, which is sort of that, okay? You know, with one rosette and then just a few on the outside. But like I was saying earlier, you can just make rosettes, okay, and make enough... You know, you, 
you're going to be doing this over a couple, you know, a year, a couple of years, I would have thought, unless you're, you know, you quilt every single day. But you make lots of different size rosettes. I'm going back up to me. <laughs> make lots and lots of different rosettes and then lay them out and go, right, okay, so I'm going to need to make a little piece of diamonds and you know isosceles triangles in order to join those two rosettes okay so you can plan it out and the coloring sheets are brilliant for that they really are like i will put a link up for you guys okay so you can print that out and you can start having a little look um english paper piece itself is not difficult it's really not it's a simple stitch which i was just showing you um i think the joy of this type of quilt is getting those colors right and it does take a bit of planning I would absolutely spend spend an, an afternoon with the colouring pencils and thinking, right, I want to put these colours together. And then audition some fabrics. Get your stash out, get your scrap bucket out or your fat quarter box out and think, right, what goes with what? Does that work? Oh, actually, there's a really, like I did on this one. Is that, is he back in? No. No? Oh, I thought I, thought I felt him under the table then. Like with this one, I wouldn't necessarily have put these little grey swallows in with the bears and stuff but I was going through my scrap bucket and I thought actually that little little swallow there fits perfectly into where is it that little template okay so that little template when I when I I got loads of fabrics out loads and loads of fabrics out and like that what do I like what patterns do I like have I got anything that I can fussy cut for a repeated pattern okay which I'm going to have a play around with actually and see if I can get that sort of lovely kaleidoscope effect that you can get when you fussy cut certain parts of fabric. Jenny asks, if you attach the rosettes like in the printout, do you lose some of them? Uh, sorry, say again. As, as they overlap, do you lose some of them? No, because you build into them. So if you have a look at this one, can you see what she's done here? Is she's started like her that original bit there and these bits she's done in her like yellows and greens but this bit of the rosette like if you imagine it, it stopped there she started with the orange because the orange one is going to come into it and then you know like here this little you can see she's fussy cut all those little flat floral bouquets and then she, but she's finished it off with this bit here okay so i would start by making maybe one sort of medium size one okay so maybe making like this piece here okay and then maybe making this piece here and then that piece there and then when you've made half a dozen or so see how they'd fit in and then you would make these pieces to make this one join to that one i hope that makes sense like i said you can't there is a, there are the millefore quilt books um i think her name's will willney it's Will, Y-N-E, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it, Hammerstein. Um, you can get them, you can get them on eBay, you can get. You can buy them second hand. She's, made, she's done three books in total and they are literally the bible of this method. I mean, they are so brilliant, the books, and I keep, I keep an eye out for them. You can buy them on Amazon, um, used copies, but they're about 40 quid for a used copy. Um, but you know, maybe somebody's out, out there's got got it, got one of the books. You know, maybe a friend's got one, and you can borrow it for a little bit and have a good read. Um, but yeah, they they say to make lots of smaller rosettes, and then once you've got maybe half a dozen to ten made, lay out that section of the quilt and go right. Okay, and now I need to make that piece to join that one into that one. Now I need to make that piece, etc., etc. Um, I just wanted to have a go, and I'm going to make a little cushion cover. It also means I get to uh, play around with my bears again because you know I love this fabric. <laughs> How I'm going to attach this is I'm just going to do like with needle turn, just going to all bind in. I'm just going to do an invisible slip, slip stitch all the way around the edge and I'll quilt it up and I might do some hand quilting into it as well if I want, you know, I'll see how I feel. Um, any other questions or comments? I feel like I've just been talking and talking and talking today. No, I believe it was Jenny who says thank you. Um, you probably could start. Mm. And he says that's lovely and complicated. It is. It's not, like I said, it's not, if you've never done it before, English paper piecing, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go straight into this. Okay. Have a little play around. Decide if you like the technique. You know, if you've not done it before, it's definitely worth deciding whether you like the technique. It's a brilliant travel project because actually if you just made all your, 
all your pieces up for that whole thing popped them in a little you know you get it i'd get i've got all those pieces into a bag of that size needle and thread and pair of scissors that's all you need and it's brilliant for taking around you just leave it in the car if you sat waiting for the grandkids to play football or whatever you know you just want to sit you know and do something it's a really good travel project english paper pieces Jackie says do you leave the paper in no you take it out you take it out so once you've completed a section um actually let me see if i can show you on here the papers come out because obviously if you left the papers in you wouldn't be able to um wash it because obviously the paper would go funny let me just take this off just a second and show you well, enough to flip it back anyway <laughs> Let me take these little pins out. I love these little PK pins as well. They're the clover ones. They're fab for this. So, once... Oh, I can't... Hang on. Let's get some more out. <laughs> Let's take some more out and I can flip it over for you then. Let's get rid of those there. That one and that one. So, because I want to be able to reuse these papers, because I don't want to have to keep cutting out the papers. You know, I mean, I just use copy paper, but you could use old envelopes, anything, okay? Once this piece was done and it was completely enclosed by this ring here I could take these out which meant I could use these papers up here okay once that ring was done it meant I would take those out because I'm just going to use this as a cushion cover now I, I'm not going any further than that I've taken all the papers out obviously before I, before I attach it to my backing fabric I would probably leave a lot of my papers in if you're going to have a little go at a quilt or join in rosettes i would probably leave them in until you are ready to completely join them because it will just stabilize it and keep it you know a little bit um more stable um but you can you can just take them out and the nice thing in fact that one's enclosed so i'll show you the nice thing about the glue pen is you literally just you can just peel back the fabric like that okay just peel it back nice and easy and then pull that paper out and then I can use that again okay they come out really easily with the glue pens you can just it just holds it just enough to keep it in place but you just peel the paper back uh, the fabric back sorry like that it comes out really really nice and easy there's no residue on the fabric and then the paper comes out like that okay and then you can I'll obviously finish this before I took any of those out any other questions there Josh uh, no, Jenny says you'd be surprised what's on the hexagon that came out of her mother-in-law's quilt. Oh, yeah, I've seen that on like um, like historical quilts and all, because obviously it's a really old method in paper piecing. When they've looked at when they've looked at the backs or they've been restoring them, there's been like old love letters and shopping lists and all sorts, because people used any bit of paper and all. Yeah, that I imagine what maybe birthday cards and things she used, Jen. But yeah, it's um, it's lovely. It's like a little piece of history when they because. You know, if you're doing a massive quilt, you might leave the odd paper in there. But no, you, sh you should take them out if you can. <laughs> That's it, everyone's saying thank you. Lovely, Brilliant lovely, demo. lovely. Cool. Yeah, it's just a really nice little, it is a nice method. It's not, it's a little challenging, okay? It's, you know, particularly when you get to those little tiny ones. You have got to, you've got to be a little bit careful when you put in like these little ones here in. Um, but... I think it's worth having a go. I always think it's worth challenging yourself a little bit. And if you like English paper piecing, these quilts, just Google La Passacaglia quilts and see some of the absolute beauties, absolute beauties that are there. Josh, would you mind just grabbing that the door? Because I think it's just me and you here <laughs> at the moment. Um, so tomorrow we're going to do some um, American patchwork. I'm going to go really old school with you guys. Really, really old school. And we're going to go back to like really traditional traditional patchwork and um show you how to do how to do that um cool thank you um so that's gonna be the block of the week i don't know what josh has just dropped but he's just dropped something he stood on something he shouldn't have <laughs> um so we're gonna do that tomorrow on the block of the week and we're gonna do some like i said some really traditional um patchwork um and i still can't remember oh i looked it up earlier i still can't remember what sarah's doing tomorrow on thursday I looked it up earlier as well and it's gone again. Sarah, are you there? Tell me. What, what are you doing on Thursday? I can't uh, remember. Suzanne says, is, is it on the website? It's on our Facebook page. The, uh, no, the... is this on the website? Yeah. Oh, um, on our website. I've done I've done this paper templates in the digital downloads. There's paper templates. I've done two sheets 
which have got lots of A's and B's right the way, you know, C, D's and E's on it. So you can just print out as many copies as you want and it means you haven't got a... Um... Flashing, slashing. Oh, yes! Ah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'll talk about that in a second. Um, yeah, so there is... Um, it's called um, La Passa Caglia Paper Templates, Templates, but it's only a digital download, obviously, because at the moment we're, we're not out and about and everything, so you can't come into the shop and I can't print one off, so you'd have to print them off yourself. But I have done the papers for you. Um, and if not, YouTube, La Passa Caglia, there are hundreds and hundreds of hints and tips out there on how to do this, not just my little bit of waffle uh yeah Sarah's doing flashing and slashing on thursday she's not really going to be flashing you but it's a really cool technique um so she's going to do that on thursday with you um yeah i think that's everything i will pop a link on for the stylecraft crochet along if anyone's interested and you can just drop us a message if you want a kit any you're right yeah <laughs> it was just saying thank you. I oh, just, he's all like wiggling like that. And I was thinking, what's the matter with him? I think he was just having a scratch, like, you know, blue in Jungle Book <laughs> on the back of the chair. <laughs> um, so, oh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow, guys, at one o'clock for Block of the Week. Um, take care. Bye.